Hey guys, in this video, we continue our task of hooking up our registration form to our database. In our previous video, we went into phpMyAdmin and created our database with two tables. And in this video, we will look into how we actually connect to this database from our web application. Now, to get that process started, we will go back to our project in Visual Studio Code. And what we want to do is add a new file to this entire project. And this file will be responsible for handling the connection to the database. So to get this party started, I'm going to click on the folder that we created from the beginning called the DB. It's empty right now, but I'm going to select it and create a new file in there. And I'm going to call this file con that's c o n n dot p h p all right and that's just a naming convention other tutorials or other sources may have it as db config or something else it doesn't really matter what you call the file but once again you always want it to be indicative of its purpose now inside this file i'm going to start off with my php tags and we're going to see how we build what we call a connection string and we'll be using what we call a pdo object now there are multiple ways to connect to a database in in php there are what you call apis that allow or facilitate the connection between your php code and the database and the one that we will be using is pdo now the reason I'm using PDO is that it offers some more protection than other libraries you may see. So literally the letter is PDO. That's the PDO. All right. You'll see other drivers like MySQL and you'll see MySQL I. Those are less secure than PDO and PDO is the one that people recommend you use to prevent things like SQL injection and to prevent against other security concerns. Also, by using the PDO method, you actually reduce the need to connect to the database every time you want to do something against the database. So connections can be expensive, and the, the more your application is being used, is the more connections will be there. So, of course, you want to minimize how often somebody connects, even if they have to a lot of the times, you don't want to multiply that. So PDO offers quite a few benefits to the traditional MySQL and MySQL I um, APIs, and it is what we will be using in this course. Now to start modifying our file, the first thing that I'm going to do is the clear uh, variable, and I'm going to call it host, and I'm going to give it a value. Now the value I'm giving it is relative to the database server, meaning my database server is sitting on localhost. Localhost and PHP, my admin is just a window into this database server. All right, but the database server is at localhost. So I have two ways I can write host. I can say the word localhost, or you may also see people refer to localhost by IP as 127.0.0.1. All right, and I'll just put this IP address into context. If I type this into my browser, all right, so remember what happens when I type localhost into the browser, it automatically browses to the ZAMP landing page. Look what happens when I type that IP address into the browser. It also browses to this landing page, and that's because that IP address is what the word localhost resolves to. All right, so you can use them interchangeably. Or any, anytime you write localhost, you can write this IP and vice versa. So if you see the IP address in any other example, that's really what it is. It's just another way of saying localhost. All right, so I'm going to leave it with the IP address. So we would learn something new today. And I'm going to declare another variable called DB. And the DB that we're connecting to, DB is short for database. So the database that we're looking for and looking to connect to is the one that we created. And I'm just going to double check and make sure that I have the name correctly, which is attendance underscore DB. So I'm going to type attendance underscore DB. Next, we have a user. Now, my, my, PHP, my admin did not prompt me to log in when I was loading it. And I did mention that if yours prompted you, you could use root with no password and you would get through. So by default, once you install MySQL or MariaDB, 
you're you're given a default user called root all right so i'm just going to say root as a user and wherever there's a user there's always a request for a password and i'll just say pass is equal to and by default root does not have a password if you were using i think the my sql community edition then you would be, have been required to put a password onto the root user at the time of installation but once again if you're using zamp wamp mamp or any of these php environments all in one installation packs then you would have a user called root with no password and that will grant you access to your database this is not the most secure way but this is your machine so it's fine of course in production then you want to take greater consideration with your username and password all right and the last thing what we're going to set is a char set and this is really just to say what kind of symbols we expect to be working with and i'm actually just typing this because this is a standard char set so you don't necessarily have to remember this just appreciate that it goes there, all right? So after declaring these variables, I'm going to declare another one that I'm going to call DSN. Now DSN is actually a, a terminology used in the PDO connectivity. So it's the way that it connects to the database. It's just another engine, all right? It's short for data source name. So if you ever heard of JDBC or ODBC or stuff like that, they are they all DSN is related to that kind of connectivity. All right. So what we're going to do is actually build a DSN connection using these values. And I'm going to type it out one by one and explain as I go along. So the first thing that we do is declare a variable dsn it doesn't have to be called dsn but once again make your variables useful in in terms of their naming and i'm going to use double quotation marks because i'm just going to take advantage of the interpolation once i'm typing it in the text so we have my sql so firstly we declare the driver this is the type of database that we intend to connect to now pdo actually supports different databases different drivers you can use it for oracle if you had a microsoft sql database working with so this driver is saying that i am about to connect to a mysql database all right and then we say colon and then we feed some some parameters into this connector so the first parameter is host and then we say host equals and i can actually just use my variable that I said is host. All right, so I declared host here. So instead of typing it out inside of this string, I'm just going to type it here. So the advantage to this is that I can always change this without having to modify this entire string. And another advantage is that you are only going to do this once. So it's not something that you'll do every time you want to connect to a data. Well, every time you're about to build a site, then you'll have to do this, but for the purpose of this website we only do this activity one time and in this file all right so i'm connecting to the host and i just reference my variable next parameter is db name and we declare db up top and we gave it the name all right so i'm just making reference to all of these things and then the other thing is char set and once again we call in the char set so this would have constructed an ODBC-like connector for our MySQL instance that's sitting on localhost, as, as the value here suggests. And we want the database called attendance DB. And the char set that we're working with is this universal and standard one. In the next line, I'm going to do what we call a try-catch statement. So try catches are used for what we call exception handling. So I say try, and then I open the curly brace. And then after the second curly brace, I'm going to say catch. And then we open up two parentheses, and then we have the curly braces again, all right? So let me just walk you through the try catch. What this block does is it attempts to do something that would be defined in between the open and close for the try. And then if that fails, then it 
you you can specify what you want to happen here whether you want to throw an exception you want to stop execution or you just want to show a nice friendly error message because sometimes things happen and you would see a um, um error pop up unexpected error a lot of the times this is what is happening they have a try they tried the operation that you requested it didn't work so they say unexpected error so what we want to do is to try to connect to the database so i'm going to declare an object or another variable and i'm calling it pdo and in pdo i'm going to define or declare a new instance of a pdo class so this class is built into php so now we're looking at some object oriented stuff and the inside the parentheses for the pdo um function or class sorry we'll be passing in the values DSN. So we're passing in whatever value is inside of that variable DSN. Then we'll be passing in the user that was defined. So we didn't use user initially. And then we'll pass in the password. And well, there are other parameters that could go in there, but right now that, that's all we need. So we just need the DSN, the user, and the pass. Now you would notice that there's a little red line under the catch, and that's because we need to put what kind of exception we intend to catch. So you can actually go without the parentheses in a lot of languages, and it's just a generic catch. But in this one, you need the parentheses, and you need to specify what kind of error you're looking for. So in this situation, since we're trying to connect to the PDO, they gave us an option for PDO exception. So we're watching to see if there's going to be an error with the PDO object, and I am going to assign it to a variable called E. All right. So once there is a PDO error during this attempt, then it will catch the error and then store all the details of the error inside of some variable called e and then in the next line you can decide what you want to do so inside of this catch block i'm actually just going to say something like throw new and once you use the word throw it means it's going to stop all execution and just display an error all right so you may not want to do that all the time on your try catches but in this situation, we actually want an error to see if our connection is working or not. So I want to throw new, and then I am going to say PDO exception, and I'm going to put in some code that will get me the message. So this E here represents an object, and this object has quite a few functions in it. So I have a function that says get message, and this get message function is going to actually print what the error is saying. So whatever the error is, sometimes you want to actually read the error so that you can debug properly. Once you catch the exception, you can always get the error here. So I could just echo this without throwing an, a new exception. But once again, I actually want to stop the execution for something as critical as the database connectivity. But you can do it more elegantly by just maybe echoing that oh there's an error with this but the page would still load so that's up to you so i will leave with this code and what's once again what's supposed to happen is that it's supposed to attempt a connection to a mysql server found at this location with this database and supporting that char set and it's supposed to try that connection using a username and a password as provided here. So if anything is wrong, well, if nothing is wrong, then this will load or, or this will be okay. And if something is wrong, then all execution will stop and we will see an error message. So I'm going to make it a bit more clear when nothing is wrong and I'll say echo. So if it tries the connection and nothing goes wrong, I'm going to say echo hello database. All right, so if we see these words appearing somewhere on our page, then we know that the connectivity or the connection attempt was successful. So now that we've done up this con file and it is in this directory under DB, what we want to do is actually include it in our page. So I'm going to go back to my form and I already wrote the line. So what I did was say require once 
and I'm requiring the file db slash con dot php. So not because it's not in the includes folder means I can't include it. I have to include it. Everything that is not native on the page that I want on the page, I'm going to have to use either the require or the include to get it. Where it is though, is though it's only a matter of finding where it is. So in this situation, it's in the folder db and the file name is con. I just say require once go in the DB folder and get me that file, all right? So when I refresh my form, the expectation is that I'm going to see hello database somewhere printed and I refresh and there we go. Hello database is being echoed to our page. All right, so that's great. So that's some progress. Now, what if I got some of my details wrong? Like, like maybe I messed up on the IP address. So I did 127.1.0.1, there's no, address anywhere near here that goes by this. So if I attempted this connection with the wrong data, what would happen is, well, what should happen is that hello database would disappear. So apparently 127.1.0 is valid. So I'm just going to take out the one. Let's try that experiment. So I botched some detail in this case. Uh, I, well, my attempt to botch it failed the first time, but let I know for sure this won't work. So let's go back and see what happens. And when I refresh, then we see that we caught this error. And what we're seeing being printed here is the result of us calling the get message function inside of the object. All right. So that's what happens when you write your code that way. And you could, instead of once again, instead of throwing the exception, I could have, let me just comment this out. And let me echo an elegant message. And I'm actually going to say something like, well, I'm going to print an H1 and I'm going to say no database found. All right, close my H1 tag. And I want it to stand out and show that it's dangerous. So I'm just going to add the, the CSS class from Bootstrap class equals all right, and then here's one of the dangers now of using single and quotation and, and double quotation marks. So I'm going to use double quotation marks on the outside instead and single on the inside. So let me just make that change quickly. And I'm going to say text dash danger. So let me just refresh and show you that the page still loaded, everything's still executed, but the message is being printed as expected because no database was found. So that's what I'm saying. There are multiple ways to handle your errors. You can do it where it's doomsday if something doesn't work versus you give a nice message that's user friendly and it doesn't cause too much disruption to the flow of your site. Of course, you gauge that based on how important your, your task is. All right. So I'm going to put back my exception throwing right there because if I don't connect to the database there is no form there's no nothing else will happen or should happen so that's it for facilitating a connection to the database using the PDO object in the next video we will look at how we actually store the values in the database